Rochelle with Originally Worn and this is the first video in a series of videos that shows you how to use any Sloan chalk paint outside. If you like this video and want to look out for the others, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and find us online at OriginallyWornOnline.com and on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest under Originally Worn. Behind me you can see our front porch. It's pretty much been neglected since we've moved in um, and in this video series we're going to change that. The first video is going to be about painting this kind of spots and these columns on the side here that aren't vinyl siding to look like a, a faux wood. We're going to kind of go with this kind of cedar look so it'll be like right there um, and on the columns. It'll be pretty fun. So keep watching, learn how to do this. Here you can see a full view of everything before we do anything. Um, the other videos are gonna be how to paint this concrete to look like brick and how to paint that front door. Um, you can see though that I've started the prep work on this side. Um, I power washed a lot of the loose paint off and now we're going to go and scrape off any other loose chunks, uninstall those lights because new ones are going to go up and you're going to need to, like I'm taking off the numbers on the door, filling up any other holes and giving any loose chunks a quick sand. Here are the supplies I'm going to use to create this finish. Annie Sloan Arles, Primer Red and Han Fleur along with a round bristle brush these big, crazy, long rectangular brushes and a brush to cut in with, along with um, some antiquing glaze, which isn't 100% necessary, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. And then um, the new matte lacquer from Annie Sloan. Now that everything is prepped and taped off, um, I like to use frog tape, by the way. It's my favorite. Um, I'm going to be using two brushes. I just have a, a decent quality kind of cut in trim brush and then a round Annie Sloan brush. Um, and I'm just going to go along and do one coat of paint on everything. I'll be doing this a lot linearly um, to kind of mimic my brush strokes in where the direction the grains of the wood would go but for this step that's really not the most important thing if i had a really large area i would just roller it on since i have a small area these brushes will work fine um, and this process can be used on anything exterior wise you can do it on concrete or siding or shutters or flower boxes of course front doors i'm doing it on our siding um anything that you want to look like a fake cedar wood. For your next step, you're gonna need to mix up a mixture of your original base color, which is Aurel's, with a slight tint of a, a dark color. I'm gonna be using the Han Fleur. This is gonna give it the grain kind of texture of fake wood. So just be slightly tinted darker than what you're actually working with. So I'm gonna do about ooh, two thirds or, or two parts yellow there, or the Arles, to kind of a third or one part of the Han Fleur. So you can see that. We'll mix them together here. And you're going to get kind of a nice light gray brown. So you see that's kind of the color. It'll have the hint of the Arles in there because technically it's actually just the darker part of the grain. And then you're going to need this graining tool, which you should be able to find under my painting tools link on my Amazon store, and a paintbrush. And I'll show you how to do it. So when you're going to use a graining tool, you need to have your undercolor, like we've done Arles, and then your grain color. 
And I'm going to start here at the bottom. And I'm holding the camera at the same time I'm doing this, so forgive me. Only way to get a good video in this tight little corner space. But so you're going to do a strip about as tall as you can stand um, that before it dries out. I'll do this one kind of short because I have the camera with me and it'll make you guys sick. So you do a strip like that and you're going to need your graining tool and you're going to need a rag to kind of get the extra off with. And the goal is not for perfection here. It's literally one layer of like five. You just push it on and then you pull it and you kind of rock it and you pull it and you rock it and you pull it and that'll give you kind of a grain. And yeah, some parts kind of look like a hot mess. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, these parts like this that we can't really touch with the grain, I'm going to go in, or with a graining tool, I should say, I'm going to go in and kind of do a little bit of like a streak, like that on there, kind of like a dry brush, but a really intense dry brush. And that should make them blend in enough that you won't really see it. Again, we're going to have lots of layers on here. So this looks pretty scary now, but don't worry. It's just one more step in the whole thing. Once your wood graining paint job is dry, uh, the next step you're going to do is dry brushing. I'm doing this with um, Annie Sloan Primer Red and this ginormous brush just to make it easier. I actually got this from a friend and so I thought I'd try it out. Um, I'll link to one on my Amazon store though that's similar. This red, I have a put it when I did all my test samples. I don't know in the end if it's really that necessary or if, um, like if you don't have any around your house, if you really need to buy it for this part. But since I did it on all my samples, I don't want to skip it either just in case it's the magical thing that makes my samples great. So I actually have a video on how to dry brush like a pro. Um, it's on the YouTube channel. I'll link to it above, but it goes really in depth into detail of it. But basically you'll need either an old t-shirt or a rag of some sort, and you'll have some paint on a flat thing and you'll dip your brush in there, but you're, you need a teeny bit. You need a dry brush, hence the name of it. So like we can get, see we have just a little bit on our ends there. We're gonna take even more of them off like that. So you have these kind of bristles. Now with this big brush, we're going to attempt to go in the grain, like with the grain that I've done here, this fake grain that it would be. So if you have something that goes this direction, dry brush that direction. Um, you don't always have to dry brush up and down, but in this situation we're trying to mimic a wood grain pattern you do so see how it's kind of picking up some of these areas of just a little bit of accent again all about those layers like i said don't know how necessary this is but it's definitely not going to hurt anything so i'm going to go around and Dry brush everything. See some areas are a little heavier over here. You can kind of take and you can like push them out. And you can also like spray a little bit of water if you need. So the sun is starting to come in on us, but you can see here kind of some red areas. And our next step to be is going to be making a wash of Andy Sloan Han Fleur, which is simply just, um, I have some there down in my bucket with this same big brush. Now you could use a different Andy Sloan brush. The round one works really great. Or, um, you know, just any other regular paintbrush would be fine. That big guy just works well in this big space. I have a video on how to make a wash. Um, if you want to watch that, I'll link to it above. It really goes into detail about this and the nuances of it. 
But basically, I'm mixing some Annie Sloan paint up with a little bit of water here in an old bucket. And then I'm going to put that on everywhere. And I don't want it to totally cover up what I actually already have, but I want it to tone it all brown. And if you find your washes too thick or too thin, you can, you know, take some back off with the rag. Um, you know, just be careful not to rub it too many times because this is an actual real wood. So it's going to start taking off all the paint job you've worked for. You can see there, so it's starting to come together. Now we are going to put a glaze on in the end. So this still isn't your final color coat. So don't feel like you have to make this super duper dark. It's just more of a unifying thing. Kind of like what dark wax would maybe do if we could wax a space, but you know, we're outside and we can't wax anything. So you see where it's not been and where it has been washed getting close one more thing to note just like all the other steps make sure you're going with your fake grain with all of these including this wash in case it's got any sort of streaks to it which it will and they're not bad then they'll be going the right direction the next we're going to do is the Annie Sloan new lacquer. This is in the clear matte because I don't like stuff that's shiny. Um, it's really easy to put on as far as a top coat. It's just two coats, uh, you know, no sanding in between them or anything like that. And it's for interior or exterior. It's newer, so I haven't done a ton with it, but uh, people seem to really love it for their tabletops and cabinetry and stuff like that. So look for me using this a lot in the future. A big thing with this and with any flat top coat is that a flattening agent settles at the bottom. So you wanna really, really give this stuff a good stir. It'll really certainly help you out, get an even finish, um, stir it up here. And then we're just going to brush it on all over all the parts so you can see this stuff is white i'm actually not using any sort of special brush I try not to leave it in kind of like those white areas but also don't overwork the crap out of it annie sloan paint in itself actually doesn't need a top coat outside but i'm going to be putting a glaze over this to really give it a deep black brown look. And I have to have a barrier between the glaze and the current paint, otherwise it would just smear a huge amount of black everywhere. Once your first layer of top coat has dried, we're gonna now put on a glaze. Now this is an interior Valspar antiquing glaze. Um, the reason I'm using it is because I have it in my stash from about three or four years ago. I like it. Uh, I haven't used it a ton, but it really seems to work well for this project. Not even sure if they make it anymore. They probably make an exterior version too, or other companies do. But in Annie Sloan world, if you want to use an Athenian black for this step, that would work in the same type of purpose. It's kind of a... Uh, deep black with a hint of a brown to it but basically we're going to really uh, brush it in and kind of work it around and then wipe some off if we need I'm done with the glaze step on everything um, but I'm losing daylight quick so I'm going to show you guys a video of that the next thing I have to do is another coat of the Annie Sloan clear matte lacquer on top 
but um, that might have to wait till after it's dark. I'm still gonna try to finish it tonight because it's supposed to rain for four days. And of course then the front door has to be done and the lights and the porch and all those, but hopefully you'll watch those videos. Here you can see the final product done. It still needs the last top coat on it, but that really won't make the difference of the look. Um, you can see down there kind of our fake grain in there. Totally does help. A little update here at the end of the video. Um, when I finished the porch, I liked the finish and I liked what I made, but I didn't like it with our black shutters. So, like any paint, uh, I repainted it. So you can see behind me that the back now is Annie Sloan Chateau Gray and the pillars are Annie Sloan Athenium Black. Just looks better with our shutters on our house. Um, but the paint technique in this tutorial would be great, you know, for flower boxes or dining room tabletops or anything like that. Take it and make it your own.